So I was browsing DistroWatch earlier today and I noticed that one of my favorite Debian-based Linux distributions, Antix, had a release. They just released Antix 19.3. And uh, Antix is really interesting because it's based on Debian Stable. I love Debian Stable. Uh, it is window manager only. And it comes with like four or five window managers pre-installed. At least it did in versions that I've checked out in the past. Uh, those versions included IceWM, Fluxbox, and JWM, I think. And, and they even included one tiling window manager as well. I think they included Herbs Luft. So Antix is really a great distribution. It also still offers 32-bit ISOs. Antix is one of those distributions that if you have ancient hardware, if you're one of those people that still have you know, machines that are like 15 years old and you're really having a hard time finding a Linux distribution that will work on that device because it's that old, chances are Antix will still work on that device. Antix does not use... System D as it's a NIT system. They're still using the old Sys V init. Although I believe with this latest version, 19.3, they are also offering run it as an init option if you prefer run it. So uh, you have two different choices of ISOs as far as the init system. You can choose the one with Sys V or you can choose one with run it today. I'm going to go with the standard flagship uh, edition. I'm going to do 64 bit Antix 19.3 using Sys V init. And since I haven't taken a look at Antix in a while, I am going to run through the installation here on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and just launch into the live environment here. And I'm assuming from the live environment we can run through an installation process. The last time I looked at Antix on the channel was probably at least a year and a half ago, I would imagine. It's been a long time since I've taken a look at Antix. And immediately we launch into some kind of desktop, well, a window manager here. Is this IceWM? I'm not exactly sure. Um, Rocks-IceWM, at least here in the conky, that's what it says. So this is the Ice window manager. I'm going to go ahead and click on the install icon. So if I double click, uh, maybe I only needed to single click because I got an error. It says the installer won't launch because it appears to already be running. So I guess it only needed a single click. <laughs> double clicking it, tried to launch it a second time and it, it complained about it. All right. Uh, here on the first screen, it's just a little bit about the terms of use with Antix. There are keyboard settings. It's going to go ahead and choose US layout by default. If I needed to change it, I could change it right here. But of course, I do use a US keyboard, so I am good. I'm going to click next. Then we have our partitions. We have modified partitions. Now I could click run partition tool. I'm assuming that would probably open up a uh, gparted and that is exactly what it opens up. We could go ahead and set up our partitions ourselves or if you wanted to you could just do automatic partitioning. You can use auto install using the entire disk. I created a 20 gigabyte virtual hard drive inside this virtual machine and yeah I'm just gonna let it use that entire virtual hard drive. So I'm gonna click next. Is it okay to format and use the entire disk VDA in my case for Antix Linux yes so it's going to format the drive and of course any information any data on that drive would be wiped out if it wasn't an already empty drive so you want to make sure that you do select the correct drive if you have multiple drives in your system before just clicking OK on that all right, then we need to install our bootloader. So it's going to install the Grub bootloader. Location to install, do we want to install it on uh, MBR or PBR? Master boot record, the MBR is typically the one you want to go with. So I'm just going to click next. That was already selected anyway. Uh, computer name, Antix1, it looks like is what it's going to go with. I'm just going to go with what they fill out automatically here. Of course, you could change it if you would like. Locale. For me, United States, American English is correct. Time zone, it shows America, New York, which is the eastern time zone. I'm actually in the central time zone, so let me find a city in the central time zone. Chicago works for me. The system clock uses local time. I could click that on if I wanted to or not. I guess it really doesn't matter. The format, do I want to do 24-hour time or 12-hour time? I actually prefer 24-hour time, so I will change that. I'm going to click next, then I need to choose a username. So I'm going to call my user DT. Then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then we need to confirm that strong and complicated password. All right, and then we need to create a root password. So let's create another strong and complicated password. All right, do we want to auto log in? Meaning when we log in, we don't have to 
enter a password. It just automatically logs us in. I don't like that. For privacy reasons, I like having to enter a password to get into my computer, so I'm not going to tick on auto login. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next here. And it's still running through the installation here. This may take a few more minutes. It really just took about 30 more seconds. Now it says automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. So if I click finish, it should reboot the machine and everything should be good to go. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And it has rebooted and we get a grub screen. So it looks like the installation went OK. Let me go ahead and hit enter. Let's see how long it takes to boot. Remember, we're using the old sys v init, init system. It really didn't take very long to boot up at all. Let me go ahead and enter my name. Then let me enter my password and let's go ahead and log in. And of course, this is the ICE WM window manager here. Let me see if I can get a proper screen resolution. I wonder if Control Alt T would bring up a terminal. Let's see if they actually use that key binding. They don't. So let me search for the terminal here in the menu. All right. And I'm going to run a XRander here and just to see what are the available screen resolutions here. The one I want is 1920 by 1080. That's what my monitor is set for. All right, and now that we have a proper screen resolution, we should be good to go, although the cocky <laughs> is a bit out of place. I wonder if I could kill that and relaunch it. Let me open the terminal again. I'm going to do a kill all cocky just to get rid of that cocky in the center of the screen. Now, the first thing I want to say is you know, IceWM for a window manager, it really does look good. The panel, the menu system, I mean, this is a really nice little window manager. Uh, let me open up our, our file manager here. I'm not sure what they're using here. Is this uh, the rocks filer? Yeah, it's the rocks filer. So it's kind of a minimal kind of uh, file manager here, but it's not a not a bad little file manager, but uh, IceWM, yeah, I, I really like it. They do offer some other uh, window managers. If I go to desktop and other desktops, we do have Rocks Fluxbox, so that's Fluxbox using the Rocks file manager. We have Space Fluxbox, which is Fluxbox using Space FM, the Space uh, file manager. Fluxbox, minimal Fluxbox, yeah, you get the idea. You get a variety of Fluxboxes, a variety of Ice Window Manager, and JWM is also available, and that looks like that's it. Fluxbox, IceWM, JWM. And I know they used to offer Herbs Luft was pre-installed in previous versions. I guess they no longer offer Herbs Luft, which I guess makes sense. Probably most people probably wouldn't want a tiling window manager, so they're already sticking to floating window managers. Fluxbox, JWM, and ISWM are all very similar, so it kind of makes sense. They all function kind of the same, so Herbs Luff probably was just the odd man out. Let's see what kind of programs are pre-installed. So this was the 64-bit full install. It was 1.2 gigs in size was the ISO. So it was not a terribly large ISO. So I'm not expecting it to have just a ton of programs pre-installed, but let's see what is here. So we have a antics category and here we have an Android device USB connect. Well, that's kind of nice. I, I appreciate that they actually include something like that for people that have Android phones. That is actually pretty cool. We have the antics updater. I'm going to click on that because I'm this was just released. I can't imagine there's going to be any updates, but I would like to see what the updater tool looks like. Of course, it's got to sync the repositories. So it's got to Refresh the Debian repositories, I'm assuming, and it looks like I only have one thing that I could upgrade since it's just one thing and it probably will just take a second. I'll go ahead and run the upgrade. All right, and that was it. So, yeah, really neat little updater tool. If I get back into the applications menu, the Antics subcategory, we have the Antics user manager. I guess if you had multiple users on the system, you could manage those users. Antics Wi-Fi switch. Uh, backlight brightness, of course, that would be useful, especially for laptops. Uh, we have Chirut Rescue Scan. Wow, that's really interesting. I'm going to click on that. We're not going to be able to do anything with this. What this would be useful for is if you used Antics as a rescue USB stick, you know, you could Chirut back into your system, you know, if you needed to for some reason. Uh, so, yeah, that is very, <laughs> very useful utility to have, especially on a live USB stick. 
Uh, we have the apt package manager, of course. So that's the command line apt package manager. I'm assuming if I clicked on it, it would just open a terminal and it would give us, yeah, some apt commands that we could run. We also have date and time, format USB, ISO snapshot, the personal menu editor, and YED color. What is that, a color picker? It is. Under Applications, we have an Accessories category where, where we have our Archive Manager. That's for Zip, Unzip, and TarGZ, and that sort of thing. We have CalCurse. That's interesting because that is like a calendar scheduler to-do kind of app, but it's a terminal-based uh, application. Yeah, so I'm not sure you know, that many people would find that useful. I actually like CalCurse. I did a video about CalCurse <laughs> very, very early on in my channel's history. Like in the first month I started my YouTube channel, I briefly talked about CalCurse on a video. And that was a cherry tree. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let me do the about information. This is a hierarchical note-taking application. Okay, so that's probably a better note-taking app since it's actually a GUI note-taking app, at least for most people. Most people probably wouldn't be comfortable with CalCurse. Clipbit, of course, is our clipboard. FireGel is a way to sandbox applications, you know, where you could, for example, Firefox. You could have Firefox gelled. You know, it's, it's 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 locked in this fire gel, and it basically prevents nasty things from happening within Firefox and affecting your machine. You know, that, that's kind of the point of something like fire gel. We have calculator, which is a nice little calculator. We have LeafPad for our plain text editor, the Midnight Commander editor. So this is MC Edit, so a terminal-based uh, text editor about rocks term. So this rocks term is the terminal emulator. Also under accessories, we have RxVT Unicode, so we have URxVT, so we have a couple of different terminal emulators installed on the system. Also under accessories, we have SearchMonkey, SpaceFM, again, SpaceFM is another kind of a file manager, that's the settings for it though. And then also under accessories, we had XFBurn, which is XFCE's disk burner. Not too many people have the need for a disk burner anymore, but uh, again, because Antix is kind of designed to be used on older machines. Many of those older machines will still have optical drives, you know, CD and DVD drives. So XF Burn kind of makes sense on a distribution like Antix, where a lot of the more modern distributions, uh, it really is kind of out of place now to have a disk burning utility taking up space on the ISO. And just briefly, there is a games category where we have the DOSBox emulator, we have Jeweled and Mahjong. And under graphics, uh, we have GT Cam, we have LibreOffice Draw, Mirage, MT Paint, Screenshot, and S Simple Scan. So we don't have any of the big, heavy graphics programs, things like GIMP, Inkscape, Blender, you know, nothing like that. Again, because this is usually a, a distribution probably going to be put on older equipment, probably those kinds of programs are not common <laughs> in use. You know, Blender is such a heavy program, for example. It really requires a powerful workstation to use it. And would, is Antix the distribution you're typically going to install on a machine like that? I would have no problem installing Antix on my workstations, but that's probably not what most people would be doing. Under the Internet category, we have... Uh, Cini. I'm not sure what Cini is. This command needs root privileges. Well, I just really wanted to know what Cini was. Oh, well, I'm just going to close it. Uh, I'm not going to enter a root password and find out what that is. That sounds like a, a bad idea to give a root password to something I don't know what it's going to do. Clause mail, I do know. That's a minimal email client. It's not a very good email client. Honestly, I would install Mozilla Thunderbird if you want a proper email client or Geary. Geary is a nice, minimal kind of uh, email client that's available on Linux. Claws Mail, I've never liked it. <laughs> it just looks ugly. It's just kind of clunky, and it's, it's just not my favorite. Also under Internet, we have Connect Shares. We have Dillo. We have Disconnect Shares. Droopy. I'm not sure what Droopy is. Let's see. HTTP server starting. Why are we starting an HTTP server? I'm just going to close this. We have a few things under Internet that I am not sure exactly what these programs do. Uh, we have some FTP clients. We also have Firefox ESR as our browser. Firefox ESR. E ESR stands for Extended Support Release. It's kind of like 
you know, certain distributions have long term support releases. Uh, Firefox has extended support releases. And by default, it goes to the anticsforum.com page. I guess if you need support for antics. So that's kind of nice that they included that uh, as the home page out of the box. We also have HexChat for our IRC client. If I click on it, will it actually connect to like the antics? server or anything like that no it's going to go to OFTC I guess as the network anyway let me quit that yeah I'm not sure if the antics guys have an IRC channel but if they did it would be great if they actually made the hex chat automatically connect <laughs> to the antics support form because sometimes especially people that don't use IRC because it's such an old technology now you know, so you'll get directed to somebody's support form, you know, their IRC chat channel, but you don't even know how to use something like hex chat. So it would be great if, you know, if you just connect by default that that's the channel it goes to. I wish more distributions did that. Also under Internet, we had the links to browser. That's just a terminal based browser. We have transmission for our BitTorrent client, which is a, a fine program under multimedia. Uh, we have also mixer of course asunder cd ripper again many of the machines that are going to run antics are still going to have cd drives so it kind of makes sense to have the cd ripper there uh, celluloid i believe is the video player i don't know too much about celluloid i've never used it myself we have guvc view which is another webcam program we have mps dash youtube for youtube mpv of course is our uh, other video player uh, another minimal video player we have poor man's radio that's interesting sm tube that's a nice program too and we have sound card chooser speaker test streamlight xmms this is a uh, minimal audio player and it kind of resembles the old winamp program uh, xmms is really kind of a fascinating program we actually have a few of those old winamp kind of clones floating around on linux we have xmms of course we have audacious there, there's a few of them that have skins that kind of resemble the old windows winamp audio player under office we have the entire LibreOffice suite and let me go ahead and launch it this is debian stable so i probably should check the version numbers on this so this is LibreOffice version 7.0.2.2. And this is based on uh, Debian 10 Buster, the, the stable branch. We have a preference category with a lot of the usual suspects that you would expect to, to have here. Um, AR and R for setting our screen resolutions. That's just a graphical front end to XR and R, which I did in the terminal earlier. This is just a, a GUI for that. We also have customized look and feel. I'm assuming that's LX appearance. It is, and this is where we could play with the themes, the GTK themes, the icon sets. We also have a firewall configuration. Let's see, are they using UFW, the uncomplicated firewall? That appears to be what they are using, yes. So this is GUFW. This is the graphical front end to UFW, the uncomplicated firewall. It's kind of a standard firewall program that's usually installed on a lot of Debian-based distros, a lot of Ubuntu-based distros. And it's the firewall program I typically install on like my Arch installs. If I'm going to install a firewall, I almost always use UFW. And we have our wallpaper setter. Let's see what program they're using for this. It looks like it's called Antics Wallpaper. And let me see if I can make this window bigger because I can't even see all the buttons. Uh, can I choose select and we could play with the wallpapers. I always like checking out some of the wallpapers available. So if I hit apply, wow, that's really bright, but against a dark theme, because we're kind of using a dark theme, that wouldn't be bad actually. Let's see what else is available. That's kind of an interesting abstract art. Okay. Some of these, actually, this is nice too. It's a similar pattern to the one we had out of the box, but a little lighter. Yeah, that's not bad either. Let's see what else we have. Um, that's the default one. And huh, that could be interesting as well. Yeah, some interesting wallpapers here. I don't I don't mind these. Actually, these are actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to choose something really minimal here, though. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm going to go with that. Now, one thing I should do is I should open up a terminal and let me do a uname dash R. 
Let's see what kernel we're running because again, based on Debian stable, it's going to be an older kernel. So it is running kernel 4.9. That of course is the kernel in Debian 10. The other thing I should check is HTOP. Is it installed? It is. What kind of RAM are we using? So I gave this virtual machine two cores of my CPU and I gave it four gigs of RAM, more than enough RAM for antics. But Antics doesn't need 4 gigs of RAM because right now ICWM is using 211 megs of RAM. And that is with a little bit of stuff going on, right? I've opened and closed a lot of programs. We've got some stuff going on down here, little widgets and, you know, the uh, volume icon and the sys trait. I mean, we could slim that down. We could get that under 200 megs rather easily. So ICWM... It's really lightweight. Now let's check out some of the other window managers because that's kind of the thing with Antics. It's claim to fame as it comes with all these other uh, window managers and you can quickly switch between them. Even inside the window managers themselves, you go to the menu and if, instead of Rocks ISWM, which is what I'm doing now, if I wanted to use Rocks Fluxbox, I just click and just like that, I am in Fluxbox. <laughs> That takes a second to load. Okay. And of course, you got our Fluxbox right click menu, which Fluxbox is all right. I prefer uh, Openbox because Openbox has the ability to do dynamic menus and things like that. But Fluxbox, I guess, you know, the neat thing about it, it comes with its own panel. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about finding a third party panel or dock like the way you do with Openbox. So Fluxbox is pretty neat. If you want another box like, Window Manager, JWM is really nice. So if I go to space-JWM, let's use the space file manager with JWM. If you're a big time Openbox guy, JWM is probably the one you want to use in Antics. It's just like Openbox. There's a right-click menu. And this right-click menu does have the ability to do uh, dynamic menus, meaning you can script something so that the menu is a dynamic menu, meaning things change within the menu. So you do a bash script or Python script and it will list out things like top processes, you know, or how much CPU you're using or the current date and time, things like that. So, you know, it's not static menu entries, which are your typical entries. JWM also comes with its own panel. If I do a HTOP right now, uh, it's using 239 megs of memory. But to be fair, when we did this in ICWM, we were not running Conky. <laughs> and Conky is going to suck up a, a little bit of RAM, not much. But let's see. If I kill all of that, that's still only 235 megs of RAM. One thing I haven't checked out yet, if I right click here in JWM to get the menu and I go down to Control Center, of course, this is our system panel center the settings thingy, right? This is where you can basically configure everything about your system. So you have desktop and system and network, shares, session, disk, hardware, drivers, and maintenance. So that is a, a program you'll probably go to often. So I did at least want to open that here on camera. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it here for this very quick installation and first look at the newly released Antics 19.3. A beautiful distribution for such a minimal distribution. And Antics is, is really minimal as far as you can get it installed on some really old equipment. Like if you have something that you're really struggling, like things like Lubuntu and Peppermint and Linux Lite, you know, those won't even install on that machine. Typically, the two distributions you, sh you should try next are Antics and Puppy, right? <laughs> if you can't get Antics or Puppy to work on that machine, uh, you might <laughs> you might have to retire that machine at that point. But Antics is really fantastic. I, I love the fact that there's so many machines out there that would just be thrown away. They'd be just thrown in a trash heap somewhere because they can no longer run a, quote, modern operating system. No, no. And Antics is really helping save the environment in a lot of ways because it's keeping these machines running far longer than they otherwise would. Now, before I go, I do need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch, 5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Gregory, Kell of Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of this episode. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon because without these guys, 
This installation and first look at antics wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this show is sponsored by you guys, the community. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.